this, boys and girls. I'm going to go back to my easel over here. And I have three pictures of the sun in the sky. And you should have the, three, the same three pictures of the sun in the sky uh, yourself right in front of you. Uh, for example, you should have picture number one, which is the morning sun. And you should have picture number two, which is the daytime sun. And then you should have picture number three, which is the afternoon sun. You should have all of these three. They're not quite as big as my pictures. I made them a little bit bigger so you can see them more easily on television. Okay, so these are the sun in the sky, pictures one, two, and three. Let's find picture number one, boys and girls. Picture number one, and I'm going to put picture number one right on my easel right here so you all can see this. And picture number one, the one is in the upper right-hand corner, it's the sun in the sky, and this is the morning picture. This is the morning picture. All right, now what I'd like to do with this picture, you notice the sun is right over here on this side of the page, and we just said before, we made a list of all the colors of the sun in the sky, the morning sun is orange, so let's find our orange crayon, okay, here's my orange crayon, and let's color the sun orange. Okay, let's color the sun orange. Now, I want you to color your sun orange as I color mine. And maybe we could have a little coloring music in the background while we're doing this, too. Let's color the sun orange. Sun, and I'm going to use a piece of tape. In fact, this is an old piece of tape. Let me get a new one. And I'm going to tape this picture right on my easel so we can look at it a little bit later on. Right? This is a piece of tape. I'm going to have to stand up to do this, okay? All right, there's the morning sun right up there. Okay, boys and girls, find picture number two now. And picture number two, the two is in the upper right hand corner again. And the sun in the sky is right over the house now, right here. And this right here is the daytime sun. Now remember from our list that we put on the blackboard that the sun in the sky during the daytime, well, first of all, the sky colors are blue, but the sun in the sky in the daytime is yellow, okay? So let's find our yellow crayon. And I have my yellow crayon right out here. Everybody find your yellow crayons now. And let's color the sun in the sky on picture number two, the daytime sun. Let's color that sun yellow. So color it right along with me now as I color mine. <laughs> Okay, are you finished with your coloring the sun? All right, let me uh, take this one right next to the first picture. And I'm gonna overlap these pictures just a little bit, like this. Okay, now there's the second picture. 
Now let's find our last picture, the third picture. And this is picture number three in the upper right hand corner again. The sun in the sky, but now the sun's over here. And it's the afternoon picture. So I want you to find picture number three, the sun in the sky in the afternoon. And remember that we said that the sun in the sky in the afternoon was orange. So I want you to find your orange crayon, boys and girls. So get your orange crayon out, out again. And let's color the sun in the afternoon orange. Here's the sun over here. So why don't you color your sun as I color mine? Okay, let's look at these three things, these three pictures. You should have right in front of you. Why don't you take your three pictures and just put them right in front of you on the floor and line them up, picture number one, picture number two, and picture number three. And I want to look at these three pictures, boys and girls, and see how they're the same or different. And I'm going to stand up to do this because they're sort of up on the side of the, of the board here. And let's look for one thing, first of all. Let's see where the sun in the sky is in these three pictures. Let's see if it's in the same spot. Let me put this picture right over here, like this. I might have to move this one over a little bit, I think. All right, let's look at picture number one over here. And in picture number one, if you look at your picture right in front of you, boys and girls, all right, uh, you'll see that the sun is on one side of the page, right over here, like this. In picture number two, this is the daytime sun now. Notice where the sun is now. It's right overhead. Okay, and in picture number three, I think I'm going to move this over just over here, just a little bit like this. Okay, so you can see this more easily. In picture number three, and these should be side by side, even though I move mine, boys and girls, don't move your pictures. In picture number three, the sun should be right over here. So it looks as though our sun has moved. In the morning, it starts right here. In the afternoon, it goes right to here. And then in the daytime, or I'm sorry, in the morning, it goes right here. See, I made a mistake. In the daytime, it goes right here. And then in the afternoon, it goes right over here like this. So the sun moves across the page from here to here. And the real sky, sun in the sky does this too. Let's look uh, at the size of our suns. Let's look at the morning sun first in picture number one. And if you look at your morning sun, you'll see, you can see how big it is. All right, now, remember the size of your morning sun, and let's look at picture number two. Can you see a difference in size in picture number two? Okay, the morning sun is bigger than the afternoon sun, okay? Now remember what the, uh, I'm sorry, the daytime sun. But now remember the size of the daytime sun right here. And let's look at picture number three, right down here. Let's look at the size of the sun in picture number three in the afternoon. All right? Now the daytime sun is smaller than the sun right here. So the sun seems to change sizes from throughout the day. It moves from one side of the page to the other. It's big on this side over here. It's small when it's over here. And it's big when it gets back over here to this side. Okay, so these are three things that happen to the sun. Let's add these three things to our list. And I'm going to go over to the blackboard again. 
a piece of chalk here. And I'm going to add this to the list. I'm getting caught up in my cord here, boys and girls. All right. Now, let's see. Uh, we're going to add, we're talking about the sun. So let's put down sun under number six. And we can say one thing, that the sun seems to move. All right? So the sun moves. Okay? The sun moves. The sun has colors, which I almost forgot. And I think you can all remember what these colors are, boys and girls. One of the colors is orange. And the other color is red. No, it's not red, it's yellow. All right, let's write down yellow. Okay, the sun colors. And then something else happened too, and that was the eighth thing, the sun size. So the size of the sun changes. So I'm gonna write down sun size changes. That's sort of a tongue twister, sun size. Can you say sun size real fast, 10 times? Sun size, sun size, sun size. Well, it's sort of hard to say, isn't it? Okay, now. We forgot one thing, by the way. You know, in our daytime sky, sometimes uh, we can see something else in the sky. And I think we ought to add that to our list right away. Can you think of what it is? I want you to think about that for a second. Can you think of what that last thing is that we forgot to add uh, in our daytime sky? Think about it for a second. Could you guess the thing that we forgot to make on our list? Well, we forgot one thing, and that's the moon. So let's add the moon to our list. Sometimes we can see the moon during the daytime. There are all kinds of things that we can see in the sky, and we haven't even talked about the nighttime sky as yet. However, there are a few things that are in the sky that we can't see. And one of these things are what we call cosmic rays. Now, you probably haven't heard that term before, cosmic rays. But these are just small little particles that are coming down from the sky and are hitting us and the Earth all the time. But don't worry, they won't hurt you. They're so small that we can't feel them. Let me show you a machine on this side of the room here that helps us find cosmic rays. This machine right here is what we call a scalar. And this machine will tell us when a, a cosmic ray hits us. For example, when a cosmic ray comes down, it hits this piece of metal right here. And after it does that, some electricity comes from here all the way down this wire, right into this box in the front. Now, when this happens, a light will light up over here. Let's see if we can find some cosmic rays coming down. Let me turn the machine on. Watch very carefully now and see if we can find one of the cosmic rays. It might take us a little while because there aren't too, too many that hit the Earth. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, there aren't too many. Oh, here's one right here. It's so bright in the studio here, boys and girls, that I didn't even see it. But actually, three have gone by here already, and I didn't feel a thing. As a matter of fact, these cosmic rays are hitting you right now, too. But like I said before, they're so small that we can't see them, and we can't feel them, and they won't hurt us a bit. There sure are a lot of things in the sky, aren't there? Let me turn this off for a second. And I'm going to be going back to the blackboard, and I want to talk a little bit about the nighttime sky. Let me take another piece of chalk here. This one's broken. Can you think of any things that you might find in the nighttime sky that would be the same as you find in the daytime sky? Well, right away, let me, before we even make the list, let's write, let's draw a line here, like this. And let's call this nighttime. Oh, just night. And some of the things that we can find in the nighttime sky that are the same as in the daytime sky. Well, let's look down our list of the daytime sky. 
And one of the things, the first thing on the list in the daytime is clouds. And we can see clouds at night too, can't we? So let's put clouds down on our list. It's one of the things that we can see at night. Airplanes at night, when they have their lights on, we can see those at night too. So let's put down airplane. The sun we can't see. Uh, let's see, sky colors. Well, the sky at night seems to be the same color most of the time. It's very dark. Sun colors. Well, we can't see the sun, so the sun won't have any different colors. And all, the, all of these others are about the sun. But here's one right here that we can see at night sometimes, too, and that's the moon. So let's add the moon to our list. Right down here, we have the moon. So, so far, we have three things, boys and girls. We have clouds airplanes, and the moon. And one thing you're probably all saying right now is I forgot one, and I certainly did. I forgot the stars. So let me just put down stars right here. OK, there are four things we can see in the sky. There are a few other things that we can see in the sky, however, boys and girls, that you probably aren't too familiar with. And I'm going to go over here to the view screen right up here, and let's see a couple of things we might be able to see on our view screen up here. Well, a long time ago, one way we could find out about the sky was just by looking at the sky. People studied the sky just by going outside without any instruments or any scientific knowledge or anything. They just went outside and they looked at it. A long time ago, uh, a man by the name of Galileo worked with a scientific instrument called the telescope. This telescope allowed man to look at the sky in more detail. Let's look at some of the things that Galileo uh, studied. One of the things that Galileo studied was the moon. And here, if you look at the moon, you can see through the telescope that there are a lot of mountains and craters. The moon isn't really smooth at all. And the moon looks a lot bigger when we look through the telescope. There are mountains up there, and there are deserts. Another thing that uh, Galileo studied was some of the planets. Uh, one of the planets that Galileo studied was the planet Venus. And here's a picture of the planet Venus up here. And as you can see, uh, the planet Venus is very cloudy, so Galileo couldn't tell too much about the planet Venus itself. And even today, we can't tell too much about Venus because it is very cloudy. The third planet that Galileo studied was the planet Jupiter. And if you look at Jupiter, one thing you can notice right away is that there are three bright objects next to the large planet Jupiter. And these are the planet's uh, moons. Just like our moon goes around the Earth, these moons go around Jupiter. Another thing on the planet's surface that is sort of hard to see in this picture right here is a large dot towards the bottom of the picture itself. And today, scientists have no idea what that dot is, but they're still trying to find out. Another planet, when we look through the telescope, is the planet Saturn. And all of you, I'm sure, can see the difference of planet Saturn in that it has rings going around the planet's surface. This is something we don't know uh, too much about today either. I saved the last planet for last, boys and girls, because this planet is the most mysterious of them all. This is the planet Mars. Now, if you look at this picture of the planet Mars, you can see some lines on the planet's surface, some dark areas, and some light areas. A long time ago, people actually thought that the planet Mars, on the planet Mars, there were people living there. Just for the fun of it, let's pretend, or let's let our imaginations wander a little bit, boys and girls, and let's pretend that we could actually contact someone on the planet Mars. Let's let our imaginations wander just for a second here, just for the planet Mars. Calling Mars. Calling Mars. Come in, Mars. This is planet Earth. Calling. Over. Yes, 
someone up there. Come in, Mars. Mars? Come in, planet Mars. This is the Earth calling. Mars? Come in, Mars. Planet Earth calling. Well, I'll tell you, if this were really true, we'd be in a lot of trouble, wouldn't we, boys and girls? No one lives up there on the planet Mars. You know, we haven't uh, said too much about the stars, and there are a lot of stars in tonight's sky. Find out how many stars there are in tonight's sky. I'm going to get my chair before I start this, so I can sit right down here at the desk. And when you go to a planetarium, you might ask the planetarium specialist to show you how to find out the number of stars in the sky. When you do this, you'll need what I call a star counter. And I would like for you to make one with me right now. You should all have in front of you three pictures of a star, of a star counter. This one right here is the round circle, which you should all have. This is the yellow uh, piece of paper. And you should have two other ones also, a square one, uh, two square ones, one large square and one small square. Now, to make your star counter, what I want you to do is to take the paper, and on the dotted lines, I want you to fold the paper like this, just like this, and then so that you can still see the circle on the paper around here, like this. Okay. Now, take your scissors. You have a pair of scissors with you, too. Take your scissors. I'm having a little trouble with my scissors this morning. And cut along the solid line, or cut along the solid circle, like this. Why don't you cut out yours while I'm doing mine right now? circle like this, and then you should have a piece of paper with a big hole in it. You might even want to stick your hand through the hole in the paper like this. See how I've got my hand through the hole in the paper? Okay. This is a round star counter like this, and we can make a couple other ones. We can make two square ones, too. Now, what I'd like you to do is when you go to visit a planetarium, boys and girls, is to take your star counters with you and ask the planetarium specialist how to use these to find the number of stars in the sky. I think right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish cutting out my other two star counters, and why don't you do the same? And I hope to see you all again very soon on Next Door.